Hello, Ryan Flowers here, Risky 7 Radio Lima Foxtrot from MissDuckGeek.com. And if you were following along with the W5QB broadcast earlier this week, you will have noticed that I was a guest on that show, along with uh, Dave Kassler, and he and I talked BitX for about 30 minutes. The next day, he also posted a review of the micro BitX on his blog, asked, or his, his video blog, Ask Dave, right here on YouTube. And he brought up some objections that I thought would be kind of cool to talk about and see uh, some other perspectives on these objections. The first of which was that the Microbit X is, along with being a general coverage receiver, is also a general coverage transmitter. And uh, that is seen as a flaw because it can be used to transmit outside hand bands, which is a bad thing. That's true. There is another radio, however, that has a lot more, um, a lot more people out there who own it and people who are unlicensed and are using it for other things that are not necessarily um, legal. They're not type certified for, what, for their use and people are using them as business radios, but they're not type certified for that. Um, people are using them for uh, GMRS, FRS. They're not type certified for that. And that is the Balfang UV5R. These are everywhere, they're cheap. Uh, people are, are programming them for all sorts of things. And, uh, and they're breaking the law by doing that, quite frankly. They shouldn't be doing it, but they are. And uh, the idea, the point is that it's not the equipment, it's the operator. Same with the micro bit X, I don't think limiting it to hand bands is really going to stop anybody who wants to use it elsewhere from doing so. Um, it's an open software design, open hardware. Um, anybody can modify it to do anything with enough time in your brains, pick two. So uh, limiting it, I think, would be, um, would be moot. Uh, somebody could still modify it. Same with the UV5R. It can be used for good or bad or otherwise, and that's up to the operator. CBs, there are CBs being used outside of the out of band there. Um, there are ham radio operators using their ham radio to transmit things they shouldn't be transmitting on ham radio. Um, for example, tune down to 3940 sometime and have a listen, or better yet, don't. So the point is, it's not the equipment, it's the operator, and it's the res operator's responsibility. A ham, on the other hand, might use the micro bit X to drive a transverter for another band and the transfer might be best driven by a frequency that is not in the ham bands. That's not going to go out on the air, but it, it is useful. Uh, five, five watts in and, and you know 50 watts out on six meters, for example, and you know, they might, they'll use the uh, microbit X as a, uh, the IF. So there's lots of legitimate uses for that that aren't necessarily uh, a problem. The other objection or, or, or concern that Dave had that I thought would be kind of fun to talk about is the fact that the micro bit X and the bit X40 don't come with a case. Um, his concern was that you would have to have a kind of a full metal shop and have the skills to really build a case for it. And really, I don't think that's true. On the W5KUB show, uh, I've showcased several builds from Adam Overman, who put his in a, a cookie tin. Um, Oren Beebe, who put his in a Heathkit HW7 chassis, uh, and others that put him in a uh, uh, one of the Pelican knockoffs, Pelican case knockoffs available at Harbor Freight. So there's, I, I personally put mine in a Chinese case that I got on banggood.com um, for less than $10. You can get on Amazon for less than $20. So there's lots of different options available. Yes, you do have to put in a little bit of work, and that's kind of the idea. These things come built. It's a it's a radio on a board, and you've got to solder up the connectors, and you've got to put it in a case. And that's where your creativity comes in, and that's where the fun comes in. Again, this is being positioned to people who like to build kits and build things. Uh, use your creativity, and it can it can really spark that interest. And I think that's what this is for. So um, those are the oh, and also people are three D printing cases. Um, if you go down to the link on my blog, miss.geek.com, scroll down the right side, there's a link to Wolfland Computers. And uh, Dave Schmidt there, he's uh, printing uh, and selling 3D printed cases for the BitX40 and pretty soon here, the Micro BitX. So there's lots of options available if you want to just kind of have something to put together rather than make something. 
so anyway, that's what I had to say about the uh, those two subjects. I hope that you found it informative, useful, or something. <laughs> Uh, let me know what you think. The uh, comments are below here. Make sure you go down there and type something. And go to my blog. You can subscribe and find out when I post something new. And check out the BitX and uh, BitX40 and MicroBitX Facebook group. And that you, there's also a link to that on my blog down on the right side. It's just a big blue Facebook link. So click on that, join the group, and join the discussion and the fun. Hope to see you there. So 73 to you and have a great day.